Hey guys, I have a video I'm wanting to show you guys my final walkthrough of the 12 by 20 foot greenhouse I have built this year. I started in April, it's now August. Uh, I did everything myself, um, which I'm fairly handy, but I'll admit this was a chore, um, especially the roof, um, metal, ben metal bending, um, just a lot of little technical things that made it a lot longer job than I anticipated. Plus, I've been trying to grow a garden in it at the same time once I got the roof on. So, anyway, um, I have another video just to let you know on my channel of how I did the base and also the rain barrel system that I'm using to collect water inside the greenhouse, which I absolutely love and it's already working. Um, but I use the SunTuff polycarb panels. Uh, if you're going to build a greenhouse and you want it to last, use the use the polycarb, use the SunTuff that's made for a greenhouse. Don't buy the cheap stuff because it's not going to last as long. So, you know, if you're just building you a little cheap kit, that's fine. But this stuff here is going to be, you know, the best you can buy as, as far as for a greenhouse goes, unless you actually, you know, bought the twin wall stuff, which was just astronomical in price. So, um... I used closure strips. You can see these little brown strips that run up through here. I'm trying to get you a better picture of them. And those were nice as far as, you know, it's time consuming. I had to paint them because they were a really light brown. And then you have to screw each one in and make sure they all line up. So when you put your piece of polycarb on, it lines up. Um, and basically how you attach this stuff, you're gonna drill you a hole in each panel that's slightly bigger than the screw itself and then add your screw and that this stuff actually moves as it gets cold and hot so you want to give it room to expand and contract um, so that was time consuming um, on the outside here I have I put tin around the bottom just for protection from lawnmower basically um, I also used um, the automatic louver opening system which I've got coming on about 70 degrees I'll show you the actual uh, active ventilation system here in a minute I've got two on this side one on the other side and they open at about 70 degrees I've got a separate video on my um, rain barrel system but just to show you this is the how it works off the gutter which by the way, the gutter's the only thing I didn't manufacture myself as far as putting up. I did put it up, but I had to go pick it up because I couldn't get them to come out here and install it. So I had to install it, but I added a leaf guard. Of course, the gutter's capped on top and then that pot goes into the greenhouse and I'll show you the rest of that in a minute. Um, the, rain, the rain barrel system to me and by the way, I added a screen door on the outside just so I could remove the window in the summertime for ventilation and then put it back in, obviously, in the wintertime. Let me turn the ventilation system off where you can see how it works. So the ventilation system, you can see, is off a thermostat. And these vents actually open and close based on the temperature in the greenhouse. So I've got them set to come on at 80 degrees. So basically they're closed off if it gets below 80. And then when it hits 80 degrees in the greenhouse, exhaust fan kicks on, these lower louvers open. And it just makes it really nice because they do pull in some cool air from a lower standpoint. So um, that was a definite feature I wanted to have because I'm obviously I'm not home during the day and I wanted this greenhouse to be able to ventilate without me being here. So, and then here's the other passive ventilation on the other side. It's just one of those louvers that's got the automatic opener when it gets a certain temp. So let me cut this back off where we can hear a little better. So that's kind of a cool feature. So the rain barrel system, um, like I said, I've got another video. Basically, water comes in from two pipes, the same on each side, goes through a first flush system, and then diverts over into the tank. 
You got two vents on top of each tank. You've got overflow, and I could have teed these overflows into each other, but it was just easier for me to um, do it this way. I used uni seals to actually attach the, the overflows in the manifold on the bottom, and that's the way to go on these rain barrels. It was such a simple process to just stick the pipe through the hole um, to give you a watertight seal. I've got a self-priming on-demand pump that I can just flip a switch, and then we're ready to water. I actually just added this side to you just to kind of teach my nephew water dynamics, but you can see the little fish bobber that fits in the pipe. It kind of gives you where the water level is of the actual tanks. So, and just to give you reference off this 12 by 20 foot roof, um, we had five eighths inches of rain two nights ago. That was the first rain I've had since the collection barrels were ready and that's how much water it filled them almost halfway full. So it doesn't take a lot of rain to fill these two barrels, which would be about 110 gallons. So um, electrical, I'm gonna run 3000 watts of electric heat, but I'm also gonna have a propane backup and digital thermostat um, that'll run, you know, in the winter time, basically all I do is keep my plants alive and I'm not talking about garden plants. I just mean my palms, some of my tropicals I'll pull in here. This is why I did the concrete pad. Um, a lot easier to roll hand trucks on this little pad in the winter time on my big palm pots than to have to drag them through this gravel. So um, I hadn't, the only thing I hadn't finished on electrical, I've got to run one more outside light flood light on the outside of the greenhouse but other than that I got everything else set up and ready to go um, let's see as far as the garden in here this is the reason I built this house you know the little Orion greenhouse was good but it was so short I wanted something I could grow my okra um, you know grow my tomatoes and let them keep growing and I'm using the little plant hanging system where you can as the plant grows up the stream, I can un uncoil that little roller and drop the, and you can see how these plants have dropped, how the vines are hanging down and they just keep growing. And that lets me continue to let them grow up. And then the wicking pot okra is probably my favorite plant to plant in this greenhouse, but it's done really well. I'm dabbling in some Dr. Cracky hydroponics too, which is just my first year to ever do this. And I have another video on how I set that up, but it's pretty neat and it's worked pretty well. And you can see the plants have, you know, it's hard to tell because I've dropped the tomato plants, but they've done pretty good, both the wicking pots and the hydroponics. Um, my favorite part of the greenhouse is this right here. So I did this in my old greenhouse. Uh, it's a bougainvillea. And it, after about two years and when I get it trellised up into the rafters, not only will it give me shade in the summertime, and it'll bloom beautifully. But in the winter time, this thing will be ungodly as far as blooms because of the humidity that stays in the greenhouse. Um, so it blooms year round, which is just a cool feature. So if you ever build you a big greenhouse or have one even an average size, I recommend planting a bougainvillea just for, um, just for the beauty of it. So, um, and I didn't mention on my other thing on my rain barrel system is I hadn't finished this little one inch tee. Um, I'm just fortunate enough that I'm on the water so I can flick a switch and irrigate my yard. And so I'm going to connect that to these barrels in case we get dry on rain. I can, I can use the river pump to help fill the barrels. So I was originally going to take that pipe and go outside and add two more barrels to the system, but I'm not going to now after I saw how little rain I needed to fill the barrels halfway up. So uh, in the winter time, obviously I won't be watering as much as I would in the summertime anyway. So, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, the hardest part to me was getting everything squared. Uh, this base, I used basically um, a two by eight, I'm sorry, a six by eight post as a base all the way around. And then I basically framed my walls on top of it I uh, did some concrete pillars underneath it in certain spots, especially the corners. Um, so that is all the way around the base. 
and it, you know, I think it's gonna do well. Um, it's off the ground, so I don't have to worry about it being on the ground because I put concrete under it. Um, so, it, you know, the hardest part was that, and then probably the roof by myself. Anytime you're dealing with roof rafters and pitch and all that, that was that was probably the toughest part. But uh, other than the slowness, um, I have to say I've actually enjoyed building it. Um, it's turned out probably better than I thought it would. Um, just because I guess I've took the time to do it the way I wanted it instead of hiring somebody to come in here and do it. And uh, typically, you know, I think if we work on our own stuff, we typically will do a little bit better job because we care about it. So, uh, but anyway, I'm open to suggestions. If you see something that um, you thought I could have added, I'm always about upgrading, but um, I feel like it's turned out pretty good for a self-build and uh, hopefully in a year I can post some pictures of that big villa because I know it's going to be it's going to be beautiful. So anyway, leave me any comments and I appreciate you watching.